Live from downtown Bakersfield, 23 ABC News at 11 starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us for 23 ABC News at 11. I'm Bayan Wang. A man is in custody facing DUI charges after he crashed his truck into a motorcycle, killing the person riding the bike. We have learned that the man who died in the crash is former Bakersfield High School football player Dion Nobles. According to Bakersfield Police, at about 6 p.m. last night, BPD responded to reports of a major injury crash at the intersection of Chester Avenue and 2nd Street in central Bakersfield. Upon arrival, officers discovered the crash involved a motorcycle and a pickup truck. Nobles was the man riding the motorcycle. He suffered major injuries and later died at the scene. The pickup truck driver, Taurus Dawson, remained at the scene and was eventually determined to be intoxicated. Dawson was arrested for DUI and for gross vehicular manslaughter. He was booked into the Kern County Jail. Anyone with information regarding this case is asked to call BPD at 327-7111. And several around the community have been responding to Noble's death. 23ABC's Matt Lively takes a look at reactions on social media. Matt. Bion, that's right. If there's one thing that's true, once you're a BHS driller, you are always a BHS driller. So much uh, community into that football team. Darren Carr, who now coaches at BCHS, he was an assistant with BHS back on the 2013 state championship team. This is him carrying Dion off the field. He goes, breaks my heart. A lot of the memories that night six years ago, this was one of my favorites. Figured, smallest guy with the biggest freaking heart deserved to be seen at that moment. Uh, DJ Reed, who plays for the San Francisco 49ers, him tweeting out positive, genuine, and real. That was you. Rest in peace, Dion. Trevor Horn, he has covered football and high school sports in this town for many years. He treats my heart goes out to all those that knew and loved Dion Nobles because there's a lot of you out there. He hug those around you and make sure they always know how you feel. And then former teammates, rest easy champ. People taking on Twitter and making sure that people remember Dion Nobles in this terrible crash and his death. We'll be updating you more as this story unfolds and our thoughts are with the family. Yeah, they certainly are, Matt. Thanks for that. Bakersfield Police is investigating the death of a woman found unresponsive at a local movie theater Friday evening. BPD officials say officers responded to the Maya Cinemas on California Avenue shortly after 1030 last night after an ambulance was requested for a woman that was unresponsive. Officers found the woman inside one of the theaters. She was taken to a local hospital where she was later pronounced dead. Officials are calling the death suspicious. This investigation is ongoing. Anyone with information is asked to call VPD at 327-7111. The Diocese of Fresno has announced that Monsignor Craig Harrison will remain on paid administrative leave despite the Fresno District Attorney's Office closing its investigation into Harrison, who is accused of sexual misconduct with minors. The statement by the Diocese of Fresno reads, quote, Now that the Fresno District Attorney's Office has disclosed its determination and closed its investigation, the diocesan investigation will resume. Monsignor Craig Harrison will remain on paid administration leave during the the course of the diocesan investigation. There will be no further comment, end quote. Now to a traffic alert for this weekend. Heads up, the contractor for the 24th Street Improvement Project announcing that they are continuing their paving operations at the Oak Street and 24th Street intersection. The closures will remain until Monday at 5 a.m. on Oak Street between 21st Street and 24th Street and on the north side of 24th Street. One lane in each direction will remain open through the intersection for east-west traffic on 24th Street, but no right or left-hand turn movements will be allowed while work is underway. Oak Street will be closed on the north side of 21st Street, but the remainder of the Oak Street and 21st Street intersection will remain open. There will be detours available as well. And we're back warm and sunny. You saw pretty much that today. And, uh, you can expect that for tomorrow as well. Right now, temperatures, though, we are at 51 in Bakersfield, 50 in Arvin, 45 in Tehachapi, and 44 in Rosamond. So temperatures are slightly cool cooling down from 
today, but temperatures will warm back up tomorrow. Take a look at our 24 hour temperature change. We're seeing three degrees warmer in McFarland, two in Button Willow and seven in Tehachapi, five in Mojave and eight degrees warmer in California City. So temperatures are pretty much warming up already what we saw just 24 hours ago, but futurecast wind speed models are predicting breezy conditions for tomorrow as an offshore ridge built into the area. So we will continue to track that, but it shouldn't have too many impacts for your Sunday, but I will have that seven day forecast coming up. It has been six months since the lives of a local Bakersfield family changed forever thanks to HGTV's show Extreme Makeover Home Edition after receiving a makeover of a lifetime. 23 ABC's Leslie Gooden caught up with a family who say they don't think they will ever get over their new dream home. Leslie. <laughs> Good evening. That's right, Bayon. The Mosley family of seven says it still doesn't feel real every time they walk into their home and they will never forget yelling the iconic phrase, move that bus. And when I spoke with them and asked what has been the most memorable part of this experience, they say it's the support and love from the community. It's rewarding. Like I, like I said before, I think this home is not just our home. It's like the community's home. They help build like every piece of this house is like so loved, you know. Single mom Jessica Mosley is a mother to five teenagers aged 12 to 16 and three which she adopted and Mosley has served the community as an adoption social worker for 16 years. She says when she heard that Extreme Makeover Home Edition was coming to Bakersfield, she already had other people in mind and never thought of herself. Me, we were kind of brainstorming about what families would be ideal and who deserved it. So when I got the call a few days later, I thought it was a joke at first and I was like, no, there's more deserving people out there than me. I, you know, people who just are way worse off than I am. In the home, you can also find Annie, Miguel, Jordan, Cheyenne and Mackenzie and their grandmother who all agree the new house has brought them closer and are grateful for their own much needed personal space. But they all share one favorite room. Yeah. Yeah. The kitchen was probably yeah. the biggest surprise. It's because, just crazy. Yeah, because so, like in our yeah. old house, we'd go in the kitchen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We like grabbing food and, <laughs> and there's just more room. We can all be in the kitchen without being crammed. There's it's just really nice. The mostly kids say their experience with extreme makeover home edition has changed their lives and remember feeling every emotion possible awaiting for their new home. We're glad to have this experience and yes. yeah, it was a so good experience. This doesn't happen like to Every everybody. Day. Yeah. yeah. So. so and we're and we're especially grateful because um, how many people came out and how many people like dedicated their time and worked on it for us. Extreme Makeover Home Edition on HGTV premieres this Sunday at 9 p.m. If you'd like to catch the episode sooner, John Ball, John Ball Fans Homes is renting out the Fox Theater to host a special premiere and the doors open at 5 p.m. For more information, be sure to head to our website, turn to 23.com. For now, in studio, Leslie Gooden, 23 ABC News, connecting you. All right, thanks for that, Lesla. Well, if you have some spare time this weekend, take a trip to the Old Wild West. That's right. The annual Whiskey Flat Days has kicked off in the Kern River Valley. Organizers say you can take a trip back in time when the area was settled by gold miners and cattle ranchers. Today is the second day of the four, uh, the four day festival. There's a parade, the Wild Wild West, Days Rodeo, Wild West Encampment, Carnival Rides, the Mayor Contest, and much more. Oh, there's so many people. Oh, good turnout. I'm into history. Um, all kinds of things history. Museums have a lot to offer, and there's a good one here in Kernville. This event is a family-friendly event, and it continues through Monday. Kern County has an abundance of diverse wildlife and tomorrow you'll have a chance to meet some critters that aren't from around these parts. The annual reptile and pet expo will gear up for day two at the Kern County Fairgrounds. The event features reptile shows, educational workshops and animal adoptions. There are cat and dog adoptions and animal encounters with a possum, sloth and ooh, even an alligator. At the expo, there are seminars where you and your family can learn more about the exotic animals at this event. Not only do you get to come and learn about different exotic pets per se, because reptiles are kind of exotic, you're going to get to see animals that you wouldn't get as close up with at a zoo, which is what I do. So I tell you why an alligator is not a good pet, and please stop bringing them into California, because I'm going to have this animal for the rest of my life. It's over 50 years. The Reptile and Pet Expo will be in Bakersfield until tomorrow. 
After years of planning, the Kern High Aquatics Complex held its first ever event this afternoon. The complex, which is located off of Old River Road, held a high school swim and dive meet. The complex is the first to open by Kern High School District in over 100 years. It contains an Olympic sized swimming pool, covered stadium seating, along with a diving and warm up pool. It gives more pool, like schools opportunities to go swim at different pools and like close because Independence is right here and they usually had to go somewhere else. Now they can just cross the street and come and swim here and it makes meets better because there's way more lanes for everyone. Coming up next, police officials in New York have arrested a second person in connection to the death of Bernard College student Tessa Majors. We have the latest details. Plus, a teenager in Oklahoma is rushed to the hospital after an alert from his Apple Watch. That story after the break. And we're warming up. I'll have your seven day forecast after the break. Welcome back. Police in New York have provided an update on a suspect involved in the stabbing death of Bernard College student Tessa Majors. ABC's Aaron Kuturski with the details. The NYPD and the Manhattan District Attorney announcing an arrest Saturday in the murder of Barnard College student Tessa Majors. Rayshon Weaver, a male, 14 years of age, was taken into custody without incident. It has been a long, deliberate process from December 11th when Tessa Majors was murdered. The 18-year-old freshman from Virginia was walking through a park not far from her Manhattan campus when she was attacked. Authorities say surveillance video showed Majors entering the park. Several suspects entered later, demanded money from Majors before ultimately stabbing her numerous times. Investigators believe Weaver, who has no prior criminal history, was the person wielding the knife that struck the fatal blow. We have been in touch with Tessa Majors' family. And again, sadly, there is no comfort that we can give them, and for that we are sorry. The criminal complaint says blood and smartphone evidence, along with Weaver's own statements, were used to build the case. And it paints a gruesome picture of what this young woman endured in her final moments. The DA said Major's last words were, help me, I'm being robbed. Weaver is being charged as an adult and is facing two counts of murder in the second degree. When asked about the charges, Weaver's attorney declined to comment. We will be very careful to safeguard all the rights uh, that he has as we go forward with this case. He's expected to be arraigned February 19th. Weaver is the second suspect arrested in the case. A 13-year-old had previously been charged with aiding in the attack and is awaiting trial in family court. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. And police now say the death of 60 year old Faye Swetlick in South Carolina is somehow linked to that of a neighbor. Swetlick went missing Monday after playing in her front yard in the community of Casey. She was found dead Thursday night. Police say they found 30 year old Cody Scott Taylor dead in a nearby residence and have reason to believe the two deaths are linked. While investigators put together the pieces, mourners remember the little girl. The Casey community left teddy bears, balloons and candles at a growing memorial at the neighborhood entrance. Some say coming out to the visual touched their hearts on a very personal level. I'm very sensitive to this situation because I have a six year old and it, it was it was just overall sad. It was a very, very sad situation. Those attending the visual weren't the only ones sending their love. Dozens of tow truck, uh, tow truck drivers drove by flashing their lights to show their support. Police are treating the girl's death as a homicide, but they say other families in the area are safe. A smartwatch helped save a boy's life in Oklahoma. As it turns out, the teen had a serious heart condition and he would, wouldn't have known it without his Apple Watch. Skylar Jocelyn was in class when he got a notification on his two-week-old Apple Watch. He knew immediately something was wrong. Jocelyn's Apple Watch notified him that his heart rate was at 190 while he was sitting in class. His mom rushed Jocelyn to the hospital while his heart rate continued to climb. From the time this happened till his heart surgery, um, his cardiologist called and said his heart rate got up to 280 in the middle of the night. Skyler was diagnosed with a condition called SVT, which causes rapid heartbeat that weakens the heart over time. Skyler underwent nearly eight hours of surgery to fix his heart's rhythm. After months of recovery, Skyler is back to playing football. He now wears a device that monitors his heart and the Apple Watch that saved his life. Just in time for Valentine's Day weekend, officials say romance scams are costing Americans millions of dollars. This week, the FTC released 
New numbers on reports it's received about romance scams. They say last year's consumers lost $201 million to scammers preying on people looking for love. In fact, it says over the past two years, the money reported lost to romance scams was higher than to any other reported scam. Here's how a romance scammer tends to work. Scammers first build a relationship with their victim, then ask that person for money to get out of a so-called crisis. If it sounds like something not many people will fall for, think again. The FTC says more than 25,000 consumers filed a report on romance scams in 2019. So there you have it, Imani. If you ever meet anybody on an online dating app, you don't send them any money no matter how much your heart desires it. Yeah, well, temperature is <laughs> wise. <laughs> we're, we're not seeing those numbers. We're not seeing 200 uh, <laughs> degrees, but we're warming up a lot. Take a look at the roof cam. You can see a little bit. We're seeing clear skies out there, warmer temperatures, and a perfect weekend, three-day weekend, just getting off of Valentine's Day. So you have plenty of things to do. We're taking a look at temperatures right now, 51 in Bakersfield. 51 in McFarland, 45 in Tehachapi, and in at the Air Force Base, you're seeing 48 right now. Temperature wise, you can see that warm up eight degrees different in, difference in California City, three in McFarland, not too much here in Bakersfield. We're actually three degrees cooler than what we saw 24 hours ago. But as high pressure remains in control, we are seeing those warmer temperatures. Air quality for tomorrow will be in the moderate range with 78 for our AQI, and there was no wood burning unless registered. Our forecasted lows for tonight will be in the mid 40s, 44 in Bakersfield, 47 in Arvin, 42 in Lebec, and 37 in Tehachapi. So temperatures, we are going to see that warm up tomorrow again. 69 for Bakersfield, 68 for Mojave, and 54 in Fraser Park. And as that high pressure builds over the region, uh, we will see those warmer temperatures pretty much throughout the week. We're going to stay dry, sunny, and warm. So what more can you really ask for? Take a look at your seven day forecast as you plan for the week. And if you have Monday off, you can expect a high of 60 with a low of 42, but you do see those breezy conditions on Sunday and Monday. That's because a offshore ridge is building, so that's going to bring breezier conditions in our mountain and desert communities. But temperature wise, we're warm, we're sunny. There's no complaints over here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's warming up, felt great outside. It is. Yeah, nice. I'm ready to hit the pool. Yes, me too. I didn't even wear a jacket today, so you definitely know that temperatures are warming up. That's but the, the bad news, though, our drought monitor is showing Bakersfield as pretty dry. So we, we are rain. going to need some rain. Some rain, to, some lotion. Uh, yeah. Level that out for our <laughs> reservoirs. All right, we need some rain. It's good outside. I was cold tonight, and that's because I was at the Condors game. They were looking to snap a three-game skid. Could they do it? I'll tell you. Coming up in sports. Welcome back and into 23 ABC Sports. I'm Matt Lively. You know those montages in the movies where the character oversleeps, then they spill coffee on themselves, then they miss the big meeting because their car breaks down? Well, it's felt like that for the Condors recently. If something can go bad, it has. They've lost five of their last six and three straight coming into tonight's contest against the Colorado Eagles. Bakersfield jumped off to a quick 2-0 lead in this one before the Eagles made their move. Not even a minute into the period two, Jacob McDonald pokes it off the rebound and scores. Then later in the period, the mayor, Josh Curry, on the one-timer earlier, he had scored career goal 100 with the Condors. This was 101. It gives them a 3-2 lead, but this game was a full-on bird fight. We go to the fourth and Logan O'Connor soaring in. Watch this. He comes out of nowhere, puts it away, and now things are tied at three. And I wasn't kidding about the bird fight. Imagine like a piece of food at the beach and the seagulls are grabbing at it because now Joe Gambardella, he's got a goal. The Condors lead four to three. But here we go again. 35 ticks to go. Can the Condors close this thing out? It was a power play for the Eagles, and Sheldon Dries makes the fans cry. Condors would lose in a shootout. They get the point, but no win. They're back tomorrow at 5 p.m. And as I just mentioned, Josh Curry netting career AHL goal 100 and 101 tonight. This ties him with Andrew Iannero for fourth all time in Condors history. He is 14 goals away from third best, but will need 143 to tie Jamie Cook for first. The CSUB Roadrunners basketball team loves when they get to play on the blue court at the Icardo Center. They are eight and six at home compared to the three and nine on the road. Taking on Kansas City tonight, they were hoping for some of that blue court magic. 
magic. The runners came out sprinting a 6 0 run topped off by this Greg Lee dunk who led the team with 13 points. They were in charge, but the Roos had some big men power themselves. Javon White gets it done here. Actually, to be honest, this is basically just a dunking highlight tape. Sean Stith feeds Justin McCall, who shakes the whole basket. But while dunks are fun, scoring is even better. Kansas City, they did more of that tonight. They snap a three-game skid against the runners and take them down 59-53. to the baseball Roadrunners got their season started last night with a loss to Washington State. They fell 2-5 in the season opener. Today, things were better. The runners trailed by one in the bottom of the ninth, but an RBI single from Eric Charles walked it off. They're back on the diamond for the series to final tomorrow at noon. And tomorrow afternoon, the CSUB wrestling team will host the second annual Feud on the Field. They'll be wrestling number six Arizona State University in the great outdoors or in this case, the soccer field. Pac-12 championships just less than a month away, and the Roadrunner wrestlers are excited for the opportunity to take on a powerhouse program in a unique environment. Yeah, I'm really excited. Last year was an awesome turnout. A bunch of people showed up and got a, had a close duel. Turned out on our side, so it was fun to be a part of it. Going out there wrestling great guys, you know, they got a ranked team for a reason, and they have a lot of ranked guys, and if, you know, we go out there and wrestle the best we can, and even if we don't win, we can do the best and make a close, maybe make some close matches and make those swing matches into our favor. The match will begin at noon tomorrow. The runners wrestle at home just once more after this duel. With the SYC tournament wrapping up this past week, high school basketball is on to postseason play. Today, the CIF announced the seedings for the central section playoffs, and spoiler alert, a whole bunch of teams made it. 21 girls teams, 19 boys teams, to be precise. They make the tournament. Bakersfield High's boys and girls team were both named number one seeds in Division One. Bakersfield Christian was the only other one seed, and they will play in Division Three. Game one for all teams will be played played either on Tuesday the 18th or Wednesday the 19th, and five of those games will feature two Kern County schools facing each other head to head. Bion, I've heard that you balled quite a bit in high school. I did, I did, yeah. Uh, made it to the CIF, gosh, we lost in the semifinals to Edison, but anyways, I played some of the local high school basketball kids. Really? We come to the local Body X. Yeah, and did so, you uh, work against them or? Yeah, you know, I feel a little bad sometimes, so I let them, you know, score a couple of buckets. What a guy. <laughs> Bye on Wang. <laughs> Still give it to them as much as I can, you know. Well, I, I play basketball too. You do? Not, I did. Not, okay. a, not anymore, but. I don't see you hooping at the apartment. I was more so volleyball, volleyball okay. player. Nice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> still ahead, we take a final look at your forecast. Welcome back, Kern County, you guys. I have to say, it felt great today, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I did. Yes. Really great. Yeah. Didn't even need a jacket. No. And you can expect that tomorrow and pretty much the rest of the week. It's going to be mostly dry with temperatures in the high 60s for tomorrow. You can expect a high of 69 and we'll cool down just a little bit on Monday, President's Day. And by Wednesday, we may see 70, 70 degrees and Thursday, 73 here in the valley and our mountain communities. Temperatures are also warm as well. So you don't need an umbrella. You don't need rain boots. It's dry, dry weather, which is good news maybe for some, maybe not for others, but a little it's glimpse of summer. Quiet here. Get the shorts like and the tees back out. Yeah. This is true. It's good hiking weather. This is yeah. why I came here. And <laughs> right before uh, the last day of Whiskey Flat Days. Oh, yeah, that's right. It goes through Monday, right? No, just Sunday. Oh, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> all right, guys, thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you all tomorrow.